Hi, I'm Tom Anderson uh, with Word for Winners. I am so excited to say we've got a great program for you today filled with tremendous content of the Word of God. You're going to be blessed. Like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to have you be part of the family. Okay, if you got your Bibles today, we're starting a whole new series. Um, and we're in 3 John. So if you have your Bibles, turn your Bibles to 3 John. <clears throat> this is something that's been running around in Dr. Moran and my life for a good long time. And uh, so this series is kind of brand new, but we have to lay some groundwork today that maybe you've heard before. And I want you to make sure you've got it settled in your heart on certain things so that we can build truth into the whole series so that truth will release power that's in you that you didn't know was in you that you are not presently utilizing but is available for you to utilize. And it's going to take me three or four weeks to get to the, the bottom edge of it and the end of it so you can have an understanding of it. And, and because <clears throat> the first four or five times that I wrote this, <clears throat> it came out so complicated. And so I believe what God wants me to do is to try to break it down to simple and easy to understand or easily entreated that I possibly can. Does that make sense? And so <clears throat> this scripture has uh, it's kind of like 2 Peter chapter 1 and verses 3 through 5 that we looked at that was the most profound thing that I think Peter ever wrote by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit being partakers of his divine nature, and we've covered that with the names of God. This scripture you've heard many, many times, but have you ever really thought it completely through or understood it fully? So Lord, help me today as I share from the Word of God that I might bring truth, understanding, and that the Spirit of God would become the teacher that teaches to the depth of the soul and the depth of the heart truth, and we'll give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, so that is one of the reasons that I uh, need enough light up here on stage, because my eyes don't let in enough light from all of the crinkly cracks out there that I'm looking through. Anyway, beloved, I pray that you may... Hmm. Brethren, beloved, I pray. Moran and I pray every morning a couple hours. And uh, we pray for you. And we pray that you prosper. That is our prayer. We pray that you prosper, that you have health, you have wealth, that you have joy, peace, and favor. We pray that every day. And that's what John is doing right here. He says, I pray that you may prosper in all things. What kind of things? Well, apparently this is things. How many like things? There are a lot of good things and some bad things, but I like a lot of good things. And he wanted them to prosper in all, not just some, all good things. And then he said, and be, I always love the word be because God said let there be, but be in health. Be in health just as your soul prospers. Now, for some reason, through years and years of just my life and history, it seems as though most people think that we're working to prosper the spirit. Or we're trying to prosper the body or the flesh. But in reality, <clears throat> we were designed that when we get born again, the spirit is all brand new. It's made in his likeness and his image. And when we get born again, we have everything in us that we will ever need for life and godliness on this earth. Already implanted in us is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit came in when we cleansed the temple by asking for forgiveness and receiving the Word, Christ Jesus and the Father, and we become the temple of the Holy Spirit. I think it's important to grasp that we become the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, we, 
Father and Son are also there. The Word of God and Father God is in us. We understand that. With every good thing that we will ever need. Okay. But it's interesting that the Holy Spirit is mentioned in the temple. Now the temple is dirt. Various shades of dirt, but it's dirt. I got it really pretty dark over in... Anyway. Got a little sun. I get sun every day if I can. Anyway, the dirt is handmade by Father God and it's temporary. It was designed to live forever, but because of the fall, they would surely die and as a result, the dirt is no longer redeemable. It's going to go back to dirt. We all are going to go back to dirt. But the person that we are is spirit. And that's when is born again is going to live eternally with Father God. Okay, I think we all pretty much grasp all of that. But in this dirt, there says, there's a scripture that says that there is a treasure within earthen vessel. Now you can equate that to many different things. That's all good. I mean, you can equate it to we got Christ in us, we got Father of God in us, we got Holy Spirit in us. All of these are treasures. We got gifts from God, they're treasures. I, I understand that. But what specifically is it talking about when it talks about a treasure that's connected to the flesh, the temple, the temporary tent, the earthen vessel? What could this be? It's a treasure. Is it fully tapped? Are we utilizing it? How does it work? When we're going to get to, it works entirely through the Holy Spirit. That's why it's mentioned with, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now understand this about the Holy Spirit. He's called holy because he is God's thoughts, attitudes, and intention or purpose for the Spirit. And the purpose of the Spirit is to be our helper that constantly leads us to the Word of God, and the Word of God leads us to what the Father said. So all of the power comes from the Father. You can ask in the name of Jesus, but the Father will do it. There's just the power in the Word, Christ Jesus. That's why you ask in the name of Jesus. Y'all okay? So there's this treasure that we typically do not utilize and effectively in a Christian wall. Because we will prosper in all things and we will be in health as our soul prospers. So the scriptures are filled with things like wash with the water of the word. If we would cleanse ourselves of the wood stubble and hay and gain and keep the silver and gold, uh, then we become useful for the Father's work and study yourself approved so that you might be worthy. And so we have all these scriptures that lead us to something that has to be changed, but we don't seem to ever know exactly how to change it. Anybody got a bad habit? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Amen. But the Word of God was designed to wash us in the water of the Word. It was designed that it could clean out the wood, stubble, and hay. It could Burn up, it says in the Word. There's a number of scriptures. That it is, it is available, but we don't utilize it like we should. And most of the body of Christ is actually frightened about the process. They don't know what the process is. They pray about it, pray about it, pray about it, pray about it, but nothing happens. It really gets quiet. 
And so I'm, 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 I want to take you someplace, but I, I've got to go through some of this simpler, more simple stuff. The soul is designed uh, and impacted so strongly um, by music. This is where we get the term in our society today called soul music. Now, most music that moves the emotion is soul music, but there's some select that want to call their type of music soul music, and I don't care, I don't care about that. I love soul music. There's soul music that lifts you up. There's soul music that pulls you down. There's music like we had this morning was all uplifting. I really like that one. There's honey in the rock, baby. I could turn that into a rock song. <laughs> honey in the rock. Actually, the chord progression was 50s rock. But anyway, but, but it, it, it reaches inside and it pulls on an emotion and emotions. Are, are such a big part of our soul. And too often, just like Mar Maureen's book she wrote, are you spirit-led or are you emotion, emotionally inclined? You ought to get the book if you have never read the book. But we're supposed to be spirit-led, but most people are led by the emotions. It's, you wake up, your eyes go whoop, and the first thing you do is you check to find out how you feel. <laughs> You're supposed to wake up and say, tell your body how it feels. Yeah. I used to say this to my kids when they came to breakfast. I don't care whether you are happy or sad, but around me you will act happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm creating the emotion, and pretty soon they're very happy. But we, we, we make that choice right away, but unfortunately, oh, gloom, despair, and agony on me, deep, dark, depression, excess of misery. Amen. Music has had such a tremendous effect on our society today. Does the music lift you up or does the music take you down? Does it affect, how does it impact your soul? And I got to analyzing so much of my own personal because music has been always so emotional to me that I have so much stored impertinent information of all the words, of all kinds of thousands and thousands of songs. Somebody make a statement and I can add a song to it. What good is it? I'm not sure. But it is <laughs> impacting and affected my makeup, my success, and how much my soul has prospered. Does that make sense? See, that's what worship songs should be. We, early, in, early on, we had to, this is back 30 years ago, 35 years ago, we had to go through all of the music and take out anything with minor keys in it. I just, the song I just sang from Hee Haw is all in minor key. Mm. I feel good. It lifts you up. You hear that lonesome whippoorwill Sounds too blue to fly The moon just went Behind a cloud to hide his face and cry. It just, it just can take you down. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day is when Jesus took my sins away. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. I would almost get you going on that thing. So there's so much 
impact of society on our soul and it is dictating to us how we vote, is dictating to us how we live, is dictating to us whether we're healthy or sick, is dictating to us whether we're poor or rich, it's dictating all kinds of stuff because it is working with something that God put in us but was to be used for something positive, not for something negative. It is connected to the word enlightenment. You heard me teach about in the garden, God put in man when he breathed the breath of life. He put order, reason, love, intelligence, and enlightenment. The first four were all good, but when they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they became corruptible. The fifth one is incorruptible. It's called enlightenment, and it was the power to lead you to Christ or to have led him, led Adam and Eve to, the, uh, to make the decision of the tree of life. God planted two words and impreg impregnated the treasure within. wasn't the Holy Spirit, because we know the Holy Spirit was outside yet. God was outside. He walked with them in the garden. But there was something that he, God spoke and impregnated the subconscious or the depth of the soul. And he said, all the trees in the garden you may eat of. He said, all. Go back and read it. But of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, if you eat of it, you will surely die. Two seeds planted in the depth of the subconscious where all decisions of life are made. When Eve is confronted with the enemy in the tree of And he begins to speak to her and said, surely God has not said. Yes, God has said, she said. But what swayed her opinion was also a seed of what is evil. She had no knowledge of it. You'll be like God if you just believe me. You can be like God. Then you know what God knows. And because that subconscious, that soil, was corruptible, she corrupted it by buying into the lie of the devil. This is what happens to you when the doctor said, you have throat cancer. Out of me came, no, I don't. Well, you shouldn't argue with a doctor. But it came out of me. Why? Because something was inside of the depths of me that was faster than a human thought. Faster than a speeding bullet. Able to leap over tall buildings in a single bound. Because there was something planted in me that disagreed with what the doctor said. Yeah. Right. This is the treasure that we're not utilizing because we don't understand it and we don't use it appropriately. It's available. It is connected to the enlightenment. It's the fifth of the five. It was what's supposed to get you saved, but I don't know how many fifths got anybody saved. Oh, I thought that was, I wasn't. That was, sorry about that. Anyway, it was funny this morning when I thought about it. So, the depth of this thing, this treasure, enlightenment, was connected to the 
subconscious mind. You have the natural mind, that's seed planter. The subconscious mind is the soul. The subconscious mind is what the Holy Spirit works with. He's the one that leads to truth. Not your subconscious mind. It doesn't even know how to think. It is only a storage of all of life and every possible thing. It is so powerful that when God breathes it in and breathe, the first word breathed and the next one is breath of life in chapter 2 verse 7 of Genesis. The first one means he actually gave them CPR or breathed oxygen into their nostrils. It put oxygen into the blood, it caused the heart to start, and it became a living being. And everything by the subconscious is run and runs your body. Assimilation, consummation, elimination, blood flow, communication to every cell, every hurt, every problem. When there's a cut in your body, the subconscious sends an army to plug the hole. This thing is faster than you can think. It is so powerful. It is designed to work with the Holy Spirit to bring healing to your body, to change everything in your life, to bring prosperity to your hands. It, it is the storage processing plant that was designed by God to give us life and life more abundant. <coughs> and I'm out of time. But this is where we're going. This is where we're going. And you've heard me teach on things. In fact, I've done it with Dalton. I threw him a ball once or something. It is the process, the processing plant, to be utilized by the Word of God to program in us correct response, correct decision making, correct use of resource, correct ability of discernment, the correct ability of all of the wisdom of God that we've just been teaching. That's why this is exactly what we've got to teach right now. You've got to know how to utilize the wisdom of God in everyday life and utilize the Holy Spirit working with your subconscious program system to bring life and life more abundant to you. And that's all I've got to say about that today. Come back to next week. Tune into the same station, same time. And brought to you by Colgate. Um, I used Colgate this morning. That's probably where that came from. So Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus that Lord, as I've shared by the Spirit of God today, that it's opened up a hunger in the hearts of your people to learn, to gain understanding to utilize the fullness of the systems that you have given to us that we might have life and life more abundant. Help bring understanding, Lord, and help me as I teach it in Jesus' name. If you haven't received Christ as Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity. I did this at 27 years old, and God has guided my life into wealth, into health, into joy, into peace, into favor. He's led my life into the goodness of the truth of the Word of God. This is not about religion. I'd like for you to become part of the family of God. Just receive Christ today. Don't, this, this is something so simple and it'll happen simply by repeating this prayer after me. Watch and watch what happens to your life. Just repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. And I ask you, dear Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name, and watch your life change. I hope you've enjoyed our program today. I know it's so filled with content, and it's a real blessing. If you've been blessed, be a blessing. I'd love to have you be a partner with The Word for Winners. Thanks for being with us, and we will see you next time.